It's Andre from the High Performance Academy and we're here with Colin from Jet Racing to talk about this insane little Datsun 1200. Now Colin's no stranger to seriously powerful 4G63s, his own Eclipse back in Australia is running 680s making it uh, one of the fastest four cylinders anywhere in the world. Now this little Datsun's been around the Australian scene for years now, we've watched it develop and I just wanted to take a, a small amount of time to chat to you Colin about what makes this ute go so fast. So first of all let's start with it's a Datsun 1200 ute, what made you go and put a 4G63 in it? Look the, the Datsun's got a, a big history behind it, it was actually my father's work car and um, many years ago, well I lost my dad 14 years ago now to stomach cancer. And prior to that, he, we were used to doing street racing and mucking around on the seat streets and that. And we always said we wanted to turn his ute into a drag car one day. So anyway, prior to him passing away, he wanted us to get off the streets and do something with it. So we decided to cut it up and turn it into a street car. And it started out as a sort of a three-quarter car. And we spoke to a few friends and they sort of said the 4G63 is a, a bit of an underrated motor and it seems to hold together longer back then than the SRs and the other certain motors, which still today in its standard cast format, I believe they are a stronger motor on the SR still, you know, with a cast mode block, so. Yeah, the, um, this, the alloy block with the SR is, is a weak point when you start running the sort of power that you need to run these sort of times. Now, talking about power, have you got an idea of how much power it's producing? This car, probably in its format and a number that it's run today, so running around the 7.1, we make, we reckon it's running around 1,300, 1,350. Um, in, in, in engine horsepower. So. And what sort of boost pressure are you needing to run that number? Uh, we run 50 pound pretty much so we'll start out and you know it might like this year left the line of that pass this morning at 28 pound and then we'll just feed it in and sort of through um, top of second, third, fourth she'll run 50, 50, 51 tops that's about what we've ever seen in it so. So in terms of that, that uh, cast iron block, I mean you're running a billet block in your own car and that seems to be the norm for really high end 4G63 drag builds, where do you see the weaknesses of the cast iron block and other limitations? Well to be honest in all the 12 years we've played with 4G63s, we have not actually seen a weakness in our style of blocks ever yet. We've had one block let go in, in 12 years in, in Sydney and that was purely a rod failure. So nothing else and, uh, that a rod issue and um, that was the only failure we had. So the step to the billet for us hasn't actually been a performance enhancer. It's purely been a safety factor at the speeds that we do. Um, but these are my, my motors with the cradles in the bottom and in these 4G63s over say your VR4 style without the cradle. We haven't seen any walking. We get You get a bit of fretting in the cradles and stuff but we've never seen anything major. I run the same crank in this as I run in my billet. So, now in terms of getting the boost pressure into these engines, I mean, from my own experience with 4G63s, basically the the power is easy. You can make just about as much power as you want, but uh, the limitation is holding the cylinder head onto the block. And when you run very high boost pressure, particularly on methanol fuel, it's uh, quite difficult. So, how are you getting around that problem? Look, um, we've tried a lot of different things. You know, there's a lot of different things. In, you know, there's O rings and receiver grooves, and you know protrusions, non-protrusions, uh, we run the standard bores, we don't run sleeves or anything like that, we run a HK steel laminated gasket so we've never tried copper, we don't play with anything like that and basically we only find the issue purely when the motor's loaded. Um, the boost issue is not an issue if you've got the RPM on board and the motor's, any motor that's free revving and, and is up there in the rev range has got no load on it so the motor will handle a lot more in that sort of sense, but the only time we've ever found that we're lifting the cylinder head is if we've got load. So if we've got too much clutch in the car and we're pulling down RPM between gear shifts, so ultimately we want to be between like 900 and 1200 RPM per drop. A year, a year or two ago when we were playing out early days, you know, we were dropping 2800, 3000 and that was our problem. Hence why in my car I went to a five speed, we get the thing out, we get it up on the RPM, you keep the thing going and you keep those loads, you don't lift the cylinder heads. Okay, now in terms of the electronics package on the car, what you're actually using to, to make it go, what, what have you got in there in terms of ECU, data logging, etc? Look, we run uh, Motec M800 in the car, it's, and we've got a Motec dash in it, so we've got a fair bit of logging there, we log everything we need to in the car, and, uh, but we also, this car from day one's had an MSD ignition in it, and it, uh, I can't even remember what it is in there now, it's an MSD 
DIS7, I think it is. So it runs perfect. You know, we've never had an issue with it, so we've never changed it. It's been in there for 10 years. So I noticed you've got a turbo speed sensor there on the turbocharger. How important is that to you for, for data logging and analysis? Look, we started doing that about um, 12 months ago on both of the cars. We started doing that on a dyno. The turbo wheel speed's great. We use it a bit more in my car than we do on these. We, because we had the setting and the drilling and the machining to do, because they're pretty technical to get them in there, we did all our turbos with it. But the turbo speed gives you a lot of data real early in the part. So if your turbo speed starts going off, you can test a lot easier early and find issues quicker. That way, um, surprisingly enough, they give you a lot of data. That turbocharger as well, I don't think I actually asked what you're running there. Uh, look, we are uh, sponsored by Garrett uh, in, in last year, so we run all Garrett turbos on our cars at the moment, and that's got a GD42 on it, so and it's GDX42. So Now with that f at 50 pound of boost, are you getting near the limit of the turbocharger? If you wanted to step up to run faster than the 7.1s you're at at the moment, would you need to go up to the next size of turbocharger, or is there still plenty of room there? No, there's still plenty of room. Uh, the compressor map on a GX, uh, GDX42 has got a really tall window on it, so... You know, we're probably up in the, the pointy end of that, but we still believe, like our first pass out today, we backed 10 pound out of it than what we normally run. So we were only seeing like 40 pound in that first pass today. and But normally back home, we run 50, 51 pound in it. And um, so, yeah, I think, you know, I reckon you could probably squeeze 55 into it, even probably 60 pound into it if you wanted to, but we like to go around, so. Okay, lastly, I just want to talk about the transmission or the drivetrain in it. What are you running there? Um... We, this car used to run an auto back in the day, so when we were running into that mid eights and stuff like that, we were running an auto, um, and then we changed to a slider clutch, which then has sort of taken us from high sevens down to the low sevens with a slider clutch. So we run a CS4 in it, it's a new Lenko. Um, it's a four speed, air shifted four speed, and also we run a twin plate seven inch ace clutch in the car. In terms of the comparison between the Lenko and the Liberty style of clutchless transmission, are there pros and cons with both of those? Look, yeah, um, I haven't done anything with sort of the GF uh, gearboxes, but I've run, we only just changed my Lenko to a Liberty 5-speed in mine. And the reason I did that is because I wanted to go 5 gears. Lenkos are a lot heavier, so I was gonna, I'm already 180 pounds over in weight in my car. And by going to a five speed and extra pack, I would have gone way over in weight, again, even more. So by adding, adding the, um, the, the Liberty Extreme into mine, they can handle like 3,000 horsepower, that's what they say. So we're not there yet, obviously. But the Lenkos are just bulletproof. You can, you can give these things a flogging all day long and they will just hold up. They're just a, an amazing gearbox. The strength in them is great and they, they do well. It does well in this car. I think if we put a five speed in this car, It'd be even faster. Look, I also should have really mentioned right at the start, this car's also been driven by Kelly. Uh, really impressive. She's now one of the fastest two females running Sport Compact in Australia and um, probably um, in the top sort of five or ten anywhere in the world. So that's a real credit to her. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, also, you know, what, what, what do you want to do next to the car? Is it going to go into the sixes or are you happy with the running at, at that low sevens? Look, with the, with the deal we did with Kelly, um, my, my thing was if the car didn't cost me any money, she could drive it. Um, but I've still spent a lot of money on the car to get it where it is. But the, the whole idea of us with the, this Ute is to get Kelly into a turbo car, get a feel for it, drive the car, have a lot of fun in it, uh, which is what she's doing. So by that, we, um, we, we just achieve a little bit more with this. We want to go rounds, we don't want to turn the thing inside out. I think we could probably run sixes in the car if we wanted to, um, but I, eventually the car will run a six. Um, but when we do that, I don't know, you know. We're at a bit of a stage at the moment with clutch that we might need to do a little bit more stuff with the clutch, whether we have to go to a triple or not because of where we are with horsepower and trying to get one thing at the start line and trying to get the same at the end. I think it's one of those stages you get to a point where to go that little bit faster, even though it only sounds like a, a tenth of a second, it's actually, you really need to rethink a whole, whole lot of the car to get that to that point, that's, that's fair? Yeah, it is. It's, um, it's easy for everyone to say, oh, you, you know, you run a six something in it eventually, but yeah, we will one day, but I think we'll do, we'll, we'll do it with that cast block and that cast head, for sure, and where we're at with that combo, but we just need to do a little bit more on the, uh, on the, on the gearbox clutch side of things, so... 
No, that's awesome. Thank you for taking the time to t talk us through the car today, Colin. Yeah, Cheers. Pleasure. No worries. Thanks very much, guys. Good on you. For online tuning courses, visit learntotune.com.